Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm gonna talk as quick as I can to get these to get this next video out there as quick as possible. I want to make sure it's done in the next 10 minutes. Um, everyone has been requesting for me to put up a video on how they do the procedures. I'm gonna start with medioplasty because for me it's not the one that I'm choosing, so I don't have as much information on it. So we're gonna go through quickly what medioplasty is, and then I'm gonna go through um, what I would choose for phalloplasty. So um, I'm using Wikipedia for this, but I made sure that the facts are correct. So, um, a medioplasty is sometimes referred to as a meadow or meta. It's an alternative to phalloplasty for trans men. Um, with the effects of testosterone treatment, the clitoris enlarges over time. So the average of five, four to five centimeters. In a medioplasty, the enlarged clitoris is released from the position, which means that the cut underneath it, and they move it forward to a more closely approximate position in the normal penis. In some cases, the urethra is lengthened to the end of the tip of the neophallus, which is the end of the medioplasty. Um, the clitoris and penis are developed, are developmentally, okay, I don't know what that is. I don't know what the next word is, so I'm going to skip that one. Um, the libia um, majora, which are the sides of the um, vagina, can be united to form a scrotum. Um, where prosthetic testicles, usually made from silicone, can be inserted. This procedure is technically simpler than the phalloplasty and has fewer complications. Surgery itself is also considerably shorter, 1 to 2 hours versus 8 to 10 hours, and is much less expensive, perhaps spending $15,000 versus $18,000. Unlike um, phalloplasty, an erectile pro um, prosthesis is usually not needed to achieve an erection. The clitoris contains erectile tissue, which responds to sexual arousal, in most cisgender females, the clitoris, which means you were born female at birth, the clitoris is too small for the person to detect this erectile change significantly. In trans men and other female bodied people whose clitoris is larger, there is more of a visual apparent as it is in a cisgender men. Um, if a medioplasty is performed without a urethral lengthening or sternoplasty, they are sometimes called a clitoral release. This is less expensive than a complete medioplasty, but does not allow for urination through the new penis while standing. However, it, this also offers offers surgery a less risk because the urinary, urinary system remains unaltered without the urethral extension and still affords some of the visual effects of the complete medioplasty. That's medioplasty for you. You're basically going to cut the clitoris at the bottom, um, move it upward, and kind of give you a baby sized penis. Now we're going to move to phalloplasty. I um, just want to make sure I haven't gone over the time too much. Okay. Um, phalloplasty, we're going to talk as quick as I can. Um, phalloplasty refers to the reconstruction of a penis or sometimes artificial modification of the penis by surgery. Um, we're going to talk about the FTM version, but you can do a, phallop um, a phalloplasty surgery if you were born a man, you've, your penis is too small. Um, often, it's often for cosmetic um, purposes. Um, it's also penis enlargement surgery, but we're going to do it a little differently. Um, <laughs> the complete construction or reconstruction of the penis is done on both cisgender men who have lost their penises through either illness or accidents, or on trans men that is female to male transgendered or transsexual people. The basic procedures have similarities except for extreme, extreme cases, the micro, macro penis, although surgery on cisgender men can be simpler. Um, since the urethra still ends up in the front of the genital area, uh, genital area whereas the urethras of trans men and near the end near the vaginal opening and have to be lengthened considerably, the lengthening of the urethra is a difficult part of total phalloplasty and also is one where complications often occur. Where all types of phalloplasty in trans men and labia are united to form a scrotum where prosthetic testicles can be inserted. An erectile prosthetic can be inserted into the neophallus, again, the erection, the um, prosthesis um, to form an erection inside the phalloplasty, um, can be put in to replace the erectile tissue and enable sexual penetration. This is also done in separate surgery for healing reasons. So you're going to go through one surgery and then about six to six months to a year later you're going to go in for another surgery then put the erectile prosthesis in. Um, the long-term success rates of implants in a reconstructed penis have been poor. Um, good sensation of the 
<laughs> good, sensation, good sensation of the reconstruction can help reduce the risk for the implant eventually eroding through the skin. It is for this reason that living bone um, was first used inside the reconstruction. Long-term follow-up studies from Germany, I don't really care about that. Um, then um, we talk about how you can take the graft from your arm, your leg, your abdomen, or some other word that they give you. Um, basically, arm would be here, leg, you take it from your um, upper thigh, but inner. Um, and abdomen, they take it right from your stomach, and it's it's not pretty. Um, usually, you're going to take it from your arm just to make things easier. Um, make, make things not only easier, but safer. Um, we're going to go over to the time um, for a surgical procedure for a whole sex change at one time is a seven to nine hour surgery, um, which inform which includes the mastectomy, the hysterectomy, the ovarectomy, the colpolectomy, which is the extirpation of the vagina. I don't know what that means. Preparing of a free arm flap, which means from here, including the vessels and the nerves with microsurgical technique, creating a phalloplastic and neo-urethra, which would be what you would, would, would be the urethra lengthening to help you urinate. Um, prolongation of the female urethra into the, with the livia minor, which means going to close up the sides of the vagina. Microsurgical, um, basically connecting the arteries, the veins, and the nerves, and the neo-urethra to the prolonged urethra. Um, covering the forearm flat in the arm with a full thickness skin graft from the in from the skin from the mastectomy procedure, which means that they're gonna cover the arm with the skin from your chest. Um, preservation of the clitor of the clitoris on the base of the phallus to maintain the ability to have an orgasm post operatively. The ability to have an orgasm will be as good as preoperatively. The clitoral organ is depithesized only and will be located at the base of the penoid and covered with skin of the future scrotum. So during sexual intercourse, the clitoris will be stimulated. Preparing the, And then the last step was preparing the libia major, majora to allow for a scrotal prosthetic prosthesis at a later time. So that's basically it. Um, it's as quick as I could possibly talk for you guys. Um, but those are the differences in surgeries. If you guys have any more questions, please let me know, um, and I will post another video. Thanks, guys. Peace.